Hello, my loves. So today, uh, this week, I should say, I'm doing two shorter videos with a focus on the shoulders, upper back, and of course, the neck. Um, one of them, a little more stretching, right, with a little bit of strength. And then this one's going to be the opposite of that, the yang version, where we're going to do a little bit more strength and kind of power into some strength and do a little bit of stretching added into that. So that said, before we do anything, let's take a couple of breaths with awareness, starting on your feet. Standing up nice and tall. Right. And yes, find out where you're putting the weight in your feet. That does affect everything above it, right? You can check into all the bits and pieces, the thighs, the pelvis. But then ultimately, I'd like you to bring your awareness into your upper back, your shoulders, and your neck. And just see, get a felt sense. Let me say it that way. Get a felt sense of the area. What would it like to do if you were not to hold on to it muscularly or ask it to move in a particular way? When you're trying to find length, does that feel like that's coming with a decent amount of accessibility or is that difficult to do, et cetera? So just noticing that area. Just a blueprint so we can come back to it at the end. And go ahead and open those eyes. And then I wanna do something on our feet before we come into the strength part of it, because once we're down, um, the position of gravity often um, has, it makes it harder for people to figure out. I watch it all the time, right? So I just wanna go ahead and the movements of the shoulder blades, four of the five anyway, you're gonna move up towards the ears, forward around the side of the rib cage, down to the buttocks together like elevator doors to the ears. And what I'll say is to the wrist, have your hands out in front of you. That way we have the position to the buttocks and together. So go ahead and do that a couple more times. And it's okay if your hands move a little bit, but I want you to notice your spine is might want to move with that. And I want you to try to see if you can stabilize the spine and keep the spine really in its elongated position, what I often call neutral. Now go the other way, right? So ears together, buttocks, wrists. And again, I'm giving you internal cues to your body, not to the world around us. We're going to go internally. That way when we come down on the hands and knees, they'll hopefully be easier to find, right? So, and I really want you to pay attention to the elongation of the spine and trying to keep that neutral because it's just going to get harder from here on out. Bring the hands down, come on down to hands and knees. Now you can have a blanket under your knees. Y'all know that by now, hopefully. If you're brand new to me, please always support yourself. I'm a big believer in supporting yourself and using props, right? <clears throat> Pardon me. <clears throat> so we're just going to try to find the same motion. But before you do, I have a request. Move your thighs into an imaginary block. You could actually use one if you wanted to, right? Tone your low belly beneath the navel, your upper belly above the navel, just a little bit up to the spine. And then we work from the back side of the heart because that's the part that usually needs to gently pull in a little bit, find neutral, long neck, crown of the head forward. Now try to keep all of those things we just created, even as we do this next piece. Let your shoulder blades move to your ears, down to your wrists, right? To the buttocks, together, to the ears, to the wrists, to the buttocks, and together. Go ahead and now start to smooth that out for yourself and draw that circle that we already worked on. But now we're bearing weight, right? Or what some people call bearing weight, load bearing, right? But suddenly we have the weight of the body, some of it, <clears throat> that we're trying to hold as we move through these motions. Go ahead and go the other way. So ears together, buttocks, wrists, ears together, buttocks, wrists, and go ahead and start to smooth that out. If you ever need to come off of those wrists or it'd be better off for you to put your hands at a wall, I'll show that variation, and still work it with your hands up against a wall, that is totally fine. Maybe even feet out and putting just a, the barest amount of weight in it would work as well, right? And then take a child's pose. If you are down, any of my friends who are standing, just pause, or you could take a forward fold, but let those shoulder blades and the shoulders soften and breathe. So you could just stand and circle the arms. You could go against a wall, right? Stand facing a wall with your hands out to the wall. You could do hands and knees again. Or if you'd like the next rendition, a little more weight, 
You're going to walk your hands about a paw print forward. Move forward. You want your wrists under your shoulders. The knees are on the earth. And all of us move the thighs into an imaginary block. Low belly, upper belly, between the shoulder blades, long neck, crown of the head. The spine hopefully doesn't really change at all or much anyway. right? And then let your shoulder blades go to the ears, to the wrists, to your buttocks, together. Ears, wrists, buttocks, together. And start to smooth out that circle. And again, just notice what part of your spine wants to give way. What is the, I'm going to call it the weak point. Please don't take offense. Mine is my solar plexus. Every time my solar plexus would love to dump and I would collapse in on my kidneys if I could. Go ahead and go the other way because it's the path of least resistance for my body. So I really have to work the solar plexus above all, but I try to make sure I keep those other areas turned on as well, even as I take my shoulder blades through this articulated rotation. Move back, take the weight out of the hands, whatever version you were doing, and just soften. You might even sway your hips side to side if you're standing in a forward fold or if you're in child's pose and just say hi to the hips while we're here. No reason not to, even though it's not a hip bless. Okay, so for the next one, if you have a water bottle, not too big, you don't want one of those big monsters, you want something you get your hand around. Um, and, you know, this is sometimes difficult for me, arthritis in my thumbs, but so it doesn't have to be completely full or it could be a smaller thing, smaller is easier for me, but try to find a weight, it could be a three pound weight, etc. And just have it to the right of you. So we're in hands and knees for this one, right? We're going to try to find all the parts of the spine that I've already named off a few times, so I won't do it quite as much, but from the pelvic floor through the crown of the head, find your longest spine. And then you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna grab that water bottle with your right hand and you're gonna bring that right arm out to the side to the height of the shoulder, maybe lower, and exhale it down just a little bit. Inhale, try to lift that up, pull the shoulder blade towards, the right shoulder blade towards the left. Bring that down, again, lift it up, pulling the shoulder blade over to the left. And down, you don't have, you know, that won't happen naturally. You have to actually ask it to really pull in. Now this time hold, and you're gonna pulse up to the ceiling. Babyest pulses ever, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Ooh, bring that water bottle down. And you can either go to child's pose or sit back on your heels for a second and breathe. It's really hard to teach that one <laughs> and talk at the same time. Okay, so going the other way and I'm, well, I guess I'll turn my body and I'll just move my, my blanket. So put the, put the bottle by the left hand, right? Um, I forgot to tell you ahead of time. So I'll try to have it in the written description for anyone who's like, but I had to stop and go get props. So find the longest spine ever. Try to keep that length. And then left hand's going to grab the water bottle. And before you lift, right, find sturdy again. And then go ahead and lift it out, but the height of the shoulder, maybe lower, and then go ahead and bring that down. So we're trying not to lean to the right. When you lift up, ask the left shoulder blade to move to the right shoulder blade. Really try to find that. We just did that articulated rotation for exactly this reason, right? Go ahead and bring that left shoulder blade into the right and lower it a little bit and lift it up. And this time stay the babyest pulses ever up to the ceiling on eight, seven, Six, do it from the shoulder blade more than just from trying to lift from your hand, right? Be wiser with the body. And go ahead and bring that down. And either sitting back on the heels or going in a child's pose, they're both awesome. You're just taking the weight out of the wrists and the hands. And if you're like, I can't be on my wrists much more, you just did it. You did the part that's gonna be on the wrists. So for the next part, let's come up to standing. <clears throat> Now, you could do this next part next to a wall, and I'm going to show on a corner or a door frame that's kind of perfect. But what you do is you bring your right hand, I'm bringing my elbow into my body, right? And I have my arm about parallel with the front of my body. And then I'm going to come up to this edge of whatever you happen to have around you. Door frames are great for this, by the way. And I step just a little bit forward in front of my arm. Now my arm has resistance against the wall. I turn my body just a little bit. I'll show with this arm in case that's not making sense. So I turn my body a little bit. Don't go extreme with that, right? And try to keep the elbow in. I'm noticing how far away my elbow is already, right? And then from there, I want you to go ahead and I want you to 
push into the wall actively with the hand that's against the wall, right? So I'm gonna push into that with my right hand. I'm still trying to find one, two, three, four, five, seven, right? Find all of that length, push into the wall and breathe. Now, this is not necessarily available for everybody, but see if you can move, not your hand, but your elbow, kick it a little forward. And I bet you, you start to turn on your rhomboids, right? And get super duper tall. That's this bubble right here. And breathe. And then go ahead and release that down. And now you'll be able to see this arm a little bit better. I bring it in. It doesn't have to touch the side, but don't have it super wide, that left elbow, right? Bring your hand or your arm up. My palm is turned up, you'll notice, or, or towards my shoulder might be more accurate, right? And I'm going to step just a little bit forward, like I'm stepping through a door frame. I'm going to turn my body a little bit. Don't go too extreme with that. It's not about how far you go. This is the goal right here. Push the left hand into the wall. It's about the strength we're creating. We're not trying to necessarily create uh, you know, a super open space and in and, and this one, it's more about strengthening than stretching. That's the best way I think I can say it. It's more about strengthening than stretching. And then see if your left elbow can kick forward towards the front side of your body, even as you push into that wall, nothing else changes, just the elbow moving the same direction as your chest, right? And breathe. And go ahead and release that. And then the last one, I have a, a wall that's not great for this. If you have a, a non-limestone wall, that would be better. But I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to stand next to the wall, physically against it if I can. I'm not going to on my wall because my wall is pretty uh, coarse, right? And then I'm going to bring my arms up to the wall. I'm going to See if I can bring my elbows and the backs of my hands, but if only the elbows make it or the hands, that's okay, right? And then I'm going to try to slide my arms up the wall as far as I can without hurting my shoulder, right? Range of motion without pain. Remember that always. And elbows come back down. And inhale. Slide up. Watch the rest of the spine. And I'm pointing to my solar plexus because that's most of the bodies I work with. We tend to flare our solar plexus to reach our arms anywhere above our shoulder line, right? So really keep your kidneys against the wall. You can feel them. That's one of the beauties of using a wall, right? And bring that down. And one more time, you're going to reach up. This time, turn your palms towards each other and soften the shoulders up to the ears and then down and reach, 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 reach. Bring the arms down. Maybe a couple of shoulder rolls without, you know, worrying too much about the articulation. Just move around a little bit. And then let's just do a couple of <clears throat> final closures. And that is, you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna let your head, <clears throat> pardon me, turn to the right. Bring the left hand behind you, palm facing away, push into the sacrum. Let that left shoulder gently roll away from the right chin. They're moving in opposite directions and breathe. And don't get aggressive with that. Turn back to the front. Go ahead and turn your head to the left. The right hand comes behind. My palm is facing away from my body, right? I push gently into my sacrum to roll my right shoulder back, the back side of my body. My chin is moving to the back side of my body. So they're both moving back, but on opposite sides. Yeah, that might not have been the best way to say it, but hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> and then go ahead and release the body forward. Let your chin gently move down. Only if it feels okay, interlace. You're not pulling. Please do not pull, but I bring my hands behind my head. I bring my elbows just softly in, and I just take a breath. And then I want you to move your elbows back against that imaginary wall again. Maybe even, even, you go ahead and let the hands kind of lift the head gently up. Let the head lay in the hands. Softest neck ever. And bring that down. And then any kind of movement you want at all through the shoulders, the upper back the neck and then come into Tadasana, just how we started. Close the eyes or not and notice what you notice. Has anything shifted or changed for you? Maybe there's a part that was restricted that is no longer as restricted or not at all. Maybe there's a part that was feeling pretty good and now it's in pain, right? So always, always open to whatever you notice without judgment. Let's bring our hands together at our heart while we're here. Inhale. And namaste, friends. Maybe, maybe, if you remember any of these, it doesn't have to be all of them at once. Add them in on a pretty regular basis to your routine and see if that doesn't make a difference in the shape of your spine when you're not, you know, when you're sitting, when you're, when you're doing those events and driving and all the things. And maybe just remember every once in a while to come into that pro proper posture.
Love you.